hello guys welcome back to photographics academy all right so today we're going to be moving this particular image and transforming the background using the swag first thing is going to be an amazing video and you will have a whole lot to learn so make sure you watch the video till the end because there are a lot of six and tea i'm going to be giving in this video so the first thing you need to do up top when you want to transform your background is to make sure that you the size of your image when i say the size i mean the canvas size is matching right and that you crop out in such a way that you have space to be able to scale in and retain uh reasonable amounts of details from your background so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to prop my image and of course because i'm putting it on my instagram and other social media handles i'm going to be cropping it using 8 by 10 so I don't need any part of the image when I make my upload. So once I just crop it up, and that also allows me to gain, to gain space in my image. So I'm going to turn on my content aware. The reason I'm turning it on is to make sure that every part of this border that is white is filled up. I will have to use, you know, manual means to start filling that box. I'll just press OK and allow Photoshop to do it much. And once that is done, the next thing to be is to separate your object from your background. So I would have used my removed background, but I still want to retain the original background with this image. So to do that, I'm going to make a selection of the back of the image itself. Once I make that selection, I'll right click and go to select it back. Then I will zoom in a bit to make sure that I select on is done properly. Okay, so we can work with them. Once I'm done, I'm going to make a duplicate of my background layer. So I click and go to layer viewport. So this is my favorite way of, of transforming my background, or rather my favorite way of, you know, separating my object from, your, from my background because at the end of the day, I will still have to be able to use that same original background to restore shadows to my image. So once you are done with this process, make drag your object layer and place it above every other layer. Very important. Because if you miss this part, it's going to get really, really messy for you. So stay on your background layer, then bring in the background you want. Now, the same thing we did to our background, we're also going to do this on crop it up. Press it out. Good. So now, if you look at this background, you notice that We'll have a cloud prop here. So if I press OK with content aware, I don't really know how it's going to handle this. But if it handles it, try to work with it. But if it doesn't, we'll just have to push it to the edge so that focus up we use AI and fill up this area. So let's try and see how it handles that for us. okay so this is not bad at all we can work with this although we need to make more correction maybe somewhere like there use our clone stamp to make it look seamless same thing with the floor good and we can work with it now so i'm going to unlock the background pick up my move tool drag it all the way into my up place it over here now we have it here. So if my object is standing in this background, this is exactly where her neck should be. So I'm going to place my anchor point right there. So this is your anchor point right here. I'm going to place it over there. Here later. Eyes on. But I need her standing directly here. Like the in a little bit. So this is what I want to get, get at the end of the day for my image. So what do I do? How do I fix this plot? I'm not have to, you know, drag it down like this and make her look like she's looking on the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my market tool, my rectangular market tool, make a selection of the front, right click, go to fill, go to content aware. So Photoshop tried pulling it up, but it's messing it up. We are going to use another tech. 
So with that uh, rectangular marketing selected, go to edit and go to content aware scale. Hold your ship and just drag it out. And it's done. Very, very simple. Now, at this point, you can even decide to take the blend mode, but you will need to start working with your original background, create another background layer over here called uh, gray. Just create a gray background over here and going to restore the whole uh, background for you, but that doesn't really work out for you. So is it that you do it this way or you just go ahead and you use the background without changing the blend? But the reason I always change the blend mode is in case in there is anywhere we didn't do a proper selection, it's going to help us hide it out and we are not even going to be we made a mistake. Now, it, this brings us to the next part which is matching the lightning. We need to make sure that the lightning of the object and the lightning of the background matches each other perfectly so she doesn't look after. And to do that, we're going to create a black and white adjustment layer above all the layers over here. So once you create a black, black and white adjustment layer, it's going to remove all the colors and show you the luminosity level of the whole image. So if you look at it, you'll notice that my, my object is slightly darker than my background, although some part of how like her forehead is exactly the same luminosity, but we're not just working with the forehead. So I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer in between my black and white and my object, then clip that curves to my object. To clip, we just have to clip on this arrow here, yeah, and it's going to clip it to any layer directly we need to now we can brighten it up and increase the shadows a little bit and we'll have it so if i turn off my black and white you'll notice that our luminosity level has marked now the next thing is to introduce our shadow so if you look at your original background videos the image initially you are going to notice that our shadow is right here and if we can replicate that shadow will get a very natural look. How do you restore your shadows? Very simple. Duplicate your background, drag it over your object like this. Once you do that, change the blend mode to multiply. So once you change the blend mode to multiply or any other blend mode that is dark as well, it's going to restore the shadow. So if you look over here, you're going to notice that my shadow is back. Look at it, but it's not very, very strong. So I'm going to also create, uh, go to my levels onto L over the background and just even make it darker and also slightly brighter. But the idea is to make it look, you know, dark as well. So we'll have our shadows on the floor. But the problem is that it's affecting every other part of the image. And I'll go try other blend mode to see the one that gives you the shadow the most. So for this one, I think the linear bond does the job. So hold your alternate and create a mark for it. So this mask is going to allow you to paint that shadow in just on the floor where you need it. Like this. So we can as well just paint it over the whole floor in front and leave the one behind. So the reason I did it like this now, this is not a standard practice. But the reason I did this is also to create that uh, that luminosity illusion that the flush is standing on is darker and it even gives us more ground to stand on. We can even go ahead and make the whole floor dark like this. Or it's going to take away that illusion that we've created. But I prefer it like this. You can decide not to do this. You can just, you know, restore the shadows just to the front, but I feel this gives us a very nice cinematic look. Another thing we can do is even to select the back of our background using our rectangular market tool like this and darken it down independently, just a little. Not as dark as what we have here, but slightly dark. So the idea of all of this is to bring more attention to our image. We can even Without making that selection, let me show you. Without making that selection, create the cost adjustment layer, tacking the whole back now. 
Then pick up your brush, make it hard, and just create a dab right here in the middle, like this. See that? Let me make it and uh, let me make it to be the same size because Manity will have their beautiful. So you see that optical illusion, then press Ctrl I. So once you press Ctrl I, every other place will be bright except that center. So all this is to just make the object stand out from the background. So now we can decide to reduce it a little bit. So look at it without it. Your, look, your eyes is falling on everything. Then look at it with that illusion we created. Our object is now the main purpose. So the last thing we need to do, or second to the last thing we need to do, is to create a global color grading. You can as well leave this background and the whole job like this because our object is, you know, desaturated, our background is saturated, so it's matching. But in case your own is not matching the way mine is matching, what you can do at this point to make them match is to create a global color grading. Most of the time, I love doing this global color grading. They look at this one with my uh, color lookup table because it has a way of applying amazing color grade on everything we do and gives us a very beautiful look at the end of the look at this one. Really, really beautiful. Now we can create a pulse and just give it in very tiny contour. Just like that. And we are good to go. So I'm going to reduce the color lookup. And as well, check out for any other one that will still give us very nice results. It's really beautiful. I think it's going to look good. It toned down. But we'll have to go for what we already had. I like that way stone that is this. Beautiful. This is really good. All right, so we're almost done. The last thing I want to do is to create a vignette effect. So I always use my vignette effect to bring attention to the center of the image. And to do that, I'm going to be using my camera raw. There are thousand and one ways you can do that in Photoshop. So in this one, we're going to be using our camera raw. So press Ctrl C so and it's E to create a stamp visible layer. Go to filter, go to camera raw. So once your camera will go all down with the effect, you will see your vignette. Just apply a little bit of your image. You can even increase the highlight. You bring back light at the edge. Now this is the pedal. If you want it very strong, you want it very light. So of course I would want it light, but I also would want it to be there. This works. Press enter and we have a nice vignette effect. So let me show you the overall before and after. So I think I've been slightly that looking at it from here. I'm going to create a pause adjustment layer, press Ctrl I, and just paste it into the face. Like this. So that gives us, you know, a little bit of attention on the face. So this is the overall before and after. This is the image when we got started. This is the result of how. This is the before, this is the after. If you have any question regarding any process or anything with it, go to the comment section, ask your question, and we'll do well to add in to it. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, it helps us to keep creating new content all the time and also to keep things running right here in the video. Thank you so much for watching. Turn on your notification bell after you have subscribed. Very important. So you don't miss out on any video that we post here in the picture. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.